Now, fairly recently, I shared this portrait, and when I did, I got lots of great comments, but also lots of questions asking how I did the shadow on the wall and the floor. Was the light on the other side of a window, or did I cut out a shape and put it in front of the light to cast the shadow? Well, I can't lie, it was all done using a plugin that I have in Photoshop, so let's just dive in and I'll show you exactly what it is and how to use it. Okay, so the plugin is called Optics and it's made by Boris FX, who incidentally are not sponsoring this video. Boris FX are well known throughout the movie industry for creating special effects and they've made this plugin for use on still images. So here in Photoshop is the portrait with the shadow and here it is without. So to add the shadow, I'll first of all create a duplicate of the background layer by holding down the Command key on Mac or Control key on Windows and pressing J. Then to give me much more options later, I'll go to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters. We now see the icon in the bottom right of the thumbnail indicating that it is now a smart object. Next I go to Filter, Boris Effects and Optics. When the plugin first opens, it asks if you want to apply the same filter and preset that you used last time. In this case, I'll say no. At the bottom of the screen, we can see some of the filters and effects that are available, and there are a lot. But for the shadow effect, we want the light section. When I click on it, you can see straight away we have a shadow effect in the preview. Using the visual overlay, I can reposition the shadow, resize it, and rotate it. On the right hand side of the screen, there are many more controls available, such as blurring and resizing. Now, once we choose a filter or effect, over on the left hand side, it opens up further to reveal lots more variations. And we can see a list of categories, or we can just scroll through. The shadow effect I want is in the Windows and Shutters section. And there's lots of them. But the one I want you can see here with the star symbol, meaning I've made it a favourite. So I'll reposition it, and I'll scale it up, and drag it into the upper left of the portrait. I'll also add a bit more blur to soften it. I can also change the opacity, but I'll keep it at 100 just for this video. Now I also want a shadow effect on the floor and I have a couple of ways to do this. I could just create a new layer and then look for the shadow that I want, but in this case I'll just duplicate the one I already have which now gives me two shadows. I'll zoom out and then I'll use the corner pins to change the perspective of the shadow and then I'll drag it into place. So now we have the shadows applied. However, I don't want the shadow to be hitting the subject of the portrait, so this is where I would use a layer mask. Now I could just apply this effect, send it into Photoshop and then add a layer mask and use a brush to brush away the shadow from where I don't want it to be. However, the masking that's available in Optics is incredibly easy to use and really clever. I'll click to add a layer mask, and when I do there are a number of different types I could choose from. I'm going to use Easy Mask. Now when we use Easy Mask, we tell Optics where we want the effect visible or not by applying some simple brush strokes using these tools. So I choose the foreground brush to paint in green to say where I want the effect visible and simply brush a few strokes over the area and I don't have to be accurate at all. Then I choose the background brush to paint in red to say where I don't want the effect visible, which is on the subject. Now once I've added a few loose strokes, I then click to generate the mask, and moments later, it's done. You can see now when I turn the wall shadow effect off and on how it looks. And here's the mask view for that area. Next I need to take the shadow effect off the subject on the floor. And rather than creating a new mask, I can simply click and drag the one I've already made up onto that layer. And that's it. I click Apply, and Optics sends the image back into Photoshop with the shadow effect applied 
and masked out where I want. This is before and after, and you can see when I zoom in how good that mask is. Now, of course, we made this a smart object, so if I double click on it, it then opens optics. We're asked if we want to apply the last used preset or filter, and we click yes. Now, even if you've used optics after doing this particular picture and you've used other kinds of filters, when you click yes, optics knows which filter it was that you used when you edited that particular image. So it does apply the correct one. Once back in Optics, we can, of course, make any changes we want. So that's Optics from Boris FX, and I've not even scratched the scratch on the surface. But if you're somebody who uses Photoshop and likes to create effects in your images, then I highly recommend you take a look at this. Especially because when you add an effect, there's this time scale that you can increase or decrease to choose a different look of the effect. There's even this life scale that enables you to scroll through the life of the effect from when it started to when it ends. So you're not just getting one click, one look effects. Incredible stuff. Anyway, before I go, I just want to let you know about a completely new and free online event coming up on April 17th through April 20th, the Photoshop Creativity Virtual Summit. 19 world-class instructors teaching 36 Photoshop classes over four days, covering such things as special effects, textures, blending, lighting, drawing, painting, compositing, and much more. I've added a link in the description where you can register for a free pass to all of the content. Right, that's all I wanted to share with you. So as always, if you've got something from this video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please do click on that subscribe button because it's just a great way that you can support this channel. But for now, that's me, I'm done. I'll catch you in the next video.